welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak, coming to you uh, this uh, week from Cocoa Beach, Florida. We usually come from here or from Hawaii. There's quite a difference today. I look out at the surf this morning at Cocoa Beach, and we call them ankle slappers, just small little waves, although we had nice, sweet waves a couple days ago. But uh, I got to surf double overhead with my son, Jeremiah, uh, a couple days ago, actually. And, uh, but he surfed 85 to 100 foot surf in Hawaii in 2007. And he, he texted me, Dad, you got to watch the World Surf League is having its big wave event at Jaws and Piahi in, uh, in Maui. And there's 65 foot surf pounding over there and it's nice and glassy over here. And so uh, just quite a contrast. So enjoying the, the peacefulness of Florida. But you guys, uh, yesterday it was 81 degrees and, tonight, and, and I think this morning it was freezing it was down into the 60s so pretty brutal in florida this time of year that's why i head back to hawaii soon but um we're looking forward to having our guest today he ruined my father's life this man doesn't even know it tertiary damage we have uh, peter bond with regina cigars he's the gentleman who provides our beautiful uh line of cigars that we have the bears man cave cigars the seven virtue uh cigars based on um the seven virtues, the four milder blends are uh, the cardinal virtues of justice, self-mastery, prudence, and fortitude. And uh, the three Maduros, appropriately, are faith, hope, and love. But uh, Peter Bond, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Thanks. Good morning. This guy looks so cool. If you guys, uh, I know most everybody listens on radio or on podcast, but we've got it on our YouTube channel, the Bear Wozniak channel. And he just looks like he ought to be a man who loves cigars. <laughs> so uh, good to have you on our show. You know, you ruined my dad's life. I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, you know, I started smoking cigars when I, I built a cabin up in Montana. I, I mean, I literally built it myself. Even I even built the, 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 the trusses, you know. Had no idea what I was doing. Didn't even know which, one of a, which end of a hammer to use. I had to pull start a generator to, to use every power tool. We we're 45 miles from the nearest electricity, two miles from the Canadian border in Glacier Park. And uh, these little things called no see these little bugs would bite me when I was trying to enjoy my view of the, of, the gla- of the Glacier Mountains. And I asked people, hey, there's these little bugs. I can't even see them. Something's biting me. What is it? And they, and they said, those are called no see And the way to get rid of them is to have a cigar. <laughs> and so, uh, and so I had my first Swisher sweet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was the only thing they sold. And the, there's a little general store there in Polbridge, Montana. And, uh, and I was able to get Swisher sweets and then something happened. Then I found an Arturo Fuente and, uh, and life goes on. But my dad, uh, didn't understand. I would talk about, you know, how I'm out here praying in the evening. In fact, cigars are the reason why I have such a, expanded prayer life is because you know it extends your time of prayer and study but peter you ruined my dad's life because last uh, summer i was with my father he's 90 years old and he said you know what i want to have a cigar with you i don't think he didn't even know you know how there's a certain way to hold a cigar <laughs> he didn't know anything about it you know and uh oh my gosh now you you know how many uh boxes of cigars you're sending to my dad now right Oh Greg, yeah, that, yeah. That's Greg Wozniak. That's my dad. <laughs> he loves them. Oh, that's great. He spends uh, he spends his uh, an hour every day outside, uh, and uh, reading and, and having a cigar. Although right now where he is, it's probably too cold. But yeah, you ruined my dad. It's going to stunt his growth. I told him he's ninety years old. <laughs> 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 but but let, let before we backtrack and get to know you a little bit, your personal testimony. Uh, tell me about. Uh, uh, you know, you're where you live now and where you grew up and, and uh, that beautiful area. Uh, there's beautiful Catholics and Southern Baptists in that region where you live. Uh, just talk story. Tell us about how that all, uh, how your faith, how you grew up and how your faith in the Lord grew up. Sure. Uh, I, was, I was actually born in uh, Tampa, uh, cigar capital of the world. Oh, my so, God. Oh, so you have it in your blood. 
It was it was destiny, I believe. You know, uh, I I guess maybe one day I was a baby in a carriage and I smelled the cigar smoke floating down. <laughs> and, you know, it was it was going to be a part of my life. Uh, but uh, you know, you know what? I, was, I got I got to tell you though, I you know Jamie Derzapolsky, he's a he's a DJ for <laughs> Spirit FM, the Catholic Christian rock station over there in Tampa. Mm-hmm. And so I I I, was, I had a little segment on his show back when I was first starting and. I came to Tampa. He says, I'm going to take you and show you the highlights of Tampa. First t- place you took me was the, the, the cemetery in Ybor City. Mm. And said, this is where all the great cigar uh, masters are. And then he took me to the little Arturo Fuente store there, and I met Arturo Fuente III. And, wow. uh, so, but his, his, his highlights of Tampa was this cemetery. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, so I get it. You smell that. That's kind of a... Uh, um, a latent memory there of the cigars. Probably so, so yeah. So yeah. the baby carriage, you're in Tampa having a cigar. Go on. Yes, uh, I, you probably I have a cigar when you're one years old. old. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, you know, I figured my, my dad was handing cigars out when I was born. You know, as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't, be, don't be stingy, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the stogie. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, no, I grew up in a uh, in a wonderful uh, Catholic family, a uh, cradle Catholic. Uh, my mom was a Baptist convert when my parents got married, and uh, my dad's family was all Catholic and uh, Greek Orthodox. Uh, also. Oh, wow! Yeah, so I had kind of a blend there. I, I grew up uh, with the iconography of of the Orthodox faith and the tradition of the Roman faith, and then the love for Scripture for, that my my mom's family all had as as a uh, Southern Baptist. So, well, kind of a hodgepodge. But des- uh, describe her Bible. You remember it? Uh, very worn. <laughs> yeah, love that. Yeah, love that's that. the way it should be. And what's it's way it so beautiful. Be. I mean, you know, yeah. I, the way you s- described her, you can just see that. I went to su- I went to Baylor University, a Southern Baptist University, and really uh, there is where I f- fell in love with Scripture. Yeah, you know, yeah. So they do so have beautiful. deep love for it. So a very worn Bible. What a what a great mom. Yeah, no, she's still a very prayerful woman. Just turned seventy last week. So uh, uh, just a young yeah. young one. Yeah. Yeah, you know, but uh, I, I went through kind of a crisis of faith uh, around 30 uh, years old, which a lot of men do in that time. You know, our, our Lord was 30 uh, when he started his public ministry, and there's just something that stirs in the heart of a man. And um, I had a lot of confusion too, because I, um, it wasn't so much that I wasn't being given the faith as much as I wasn't paying attention, and mm. I had a lot of questions, and I couldn't seem to find the answers, and. Uh, I spent a lot of time uh, in the car back and forth listening to uh, 1330 AM here in Tallahassee. At the time, it was an um, evangelical station and uh, good hearted people and doing a lot, you know, trying to do the Lord's work. But there was a, a problem with the theology because it would change every 30 minutes. Whenever a new pastor would come on, there, would, there was a disconnect there. And, uh, right. I, you know, that's a very interesting statement. Yeah. I was, I, was, I, yeah. Go ahead. I, I spent. Uh, probably six, seven hours a week in the car listening. And it, it you know, I, I loved, I love God and I wanted to, to know him deeper, but I just was, I was so confused. And the things I was hearing made me almost want to leave the Catholic faith. Um, did, you, did you find, um, you know, I know like I went to a, na- one of the, the NARB, the National Religious uh, Broadcasters Association in Orlando a year ago and, and big, 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 conference and but every booth there was a different theology you know there was exactly you know and i know i was with a friend of mine recently who i in my days when i had wandered from the church had had led him into a conversion for christ and then he went on to leave the church and he said you know how it is when you listen to different teachings and you you get you have to pull the good from the bad and you get the good stuff here and the good stuff there but you kind of got to extract the good from the bad and i go yeah i remember when that used to be like yeah you know listening to christian radio and it's kind of pay pay to play, you know, whoever can come up with the money gets to be on. And, and, uh, but as a Catholic, it's different, isn't it? it well, it is because, you know, uh, the, the one thing I do thank the, um, the people that were on that, uh, that were running that station, I, I thank them for, you know, making it available that people that had no relationship with God would want a relationship with God. But when you take it to the next level and you're like, all right, look, I'm looking for truth. I'm, I, I love God. I feel that in my heart. But my mind needs truth, and that's when the kind of it, things break apart because there can't be multiple truths, and the mm-hmm. truth is symphonic, and so it has to be. I think uh, bon, bon Balthazar said that, that truth is symphonic, and so I kept hearing a lot of clanging from different instruments, and I, nothing seemed to be symphonic, 
So in, in that uh, search, I, I went through a real dark night of the soul, uh, 31-ish or so. And uh, I remember uh, out of desperation, because I used to have a, a real good prayer life. I would uh, get up every morning and I'd read the scriptures for you know half hour to an hour. And I'd pray. Uh, I thought I had God on a string. You know, I, 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 I really you know, thought I was in a good spot. And then all that was taken away from me. And I had this well, darkness of soul. We got, to, we got to take a break right there yeah, because yeah. I really want to go a little bit deeper into what questions you had too. And then we'll really go deep into this, this a period of crisis and of conversion. We're talking with my friend, Peter Bond, the man who ruined my dad's life by sending him boxes of my Bears Man Cave cigars, our, our, our seven uh, virtue cigars uh, that we have. Available at deepadventure.com, by the way. And, um, We'll be right back to explore more how he ruined my father's life and how, and how uh, he uh, uh, had a beautiful, uh, deeper uh, conversion with the Lord. This is the Bear Wozniak adventure. We'll be back in a minute. That's right. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN, and you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Plus, good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak, and today I have my co-adventure guide with me, Peter Bond, who he looks, he looks the part. He, he, he is the man who had this beautiful vision to start a, a Catholic sort of oriented cigar uh, company, Regina Cigars, and he's the one who produces our Bear's Man Cave cig cigars for us, our seven different cigars that we have available at davidventure.com. But we're talking about this this time in Peter's life as he was about 30 when a lot of, a lot of men, that's kind of the time when they got to go, I got to get serious about life. And what does it all mean? You said that you started listening to uh, regular Christian radio because you had some questions. Do you remember what some of those were? Well, it wasn't so much that I was, you know, I was tuning in cause I wanted to know more about God uh, and the question just kind of naturally evolve. Um, but it wasn't that I wasn't listening to Catholic radio. There was no Catholic radio. Uh, right. We didn't have EWTN on TV at the time, let alone on radio. Right. Uh, I'll fast forward and kind of come back to the story. But uh, in 19, I'm sorry, in 2005, that station, 1330, actually became a Catholic station. Praise God. Yeah. And uh, at about 2009, they ran out of money. And uh, so it was going to go off the air. And the gentleman that was running it, um, uh, like again, I said he was an evangelical. He wanted to do old time gospel hour stuff on there, and so I would, I had enjoyed those th three or four years of clarity and teaching, and then he starts putting this really bad old time gospel hour stuff. I mean, stuff I couldn't, I couldn't stand, and I, I forced myself to listen to it for uh, two weeks straight uh, as a penance to see <laughs> to propel me. And I prayed about it, and I told my wife, I said, we have to take this radio station and keep it Catholic, because I don't want anyone else to nearly Praise lose. God, Peter. So Man. we uh, ended up running that station as a Catholic radio station uh, from 2009 till about um, 2013, 14, when we, sent it, uh, we, we joined forces. I'm still on the, board, the head of the board. But uh, anyway, it's funny how the Lord works like that. You know, he took something that was almost a reason for me to leave the church, and he allowed me to kind of keep it on, and it's still on the air. And that we'll is so, what a great story. You know, and so many people I know involved in uh, the EWTN radio network, in fact, most of them had nothing to do with radio. Oh, yeah. And God yeah. just kind of taps them on the shoulder and says, hey, you got a minute, you know. <laughs> and next thing you know, they're starting. And it, More than a minute. <laughs> it takes a lot of faith because you got those big towers you've got to maintain, and it's, ex yeah. it's, it's, it's actually, it's expensive. Yeah. More and expensive I to have a radio network than a TV network in some ways. 
Yeah, I knew nothing about it. And uh, I realized after a short amount of time, you need four people to run a Catholic or any radio station. You need a techie, you know, that can kind of do all the, the wires and the buttons. Uh, yeah. You need a nerd to do the books and keep the, the money, uh, you know, straight. You need a fundraiser who can go out there and schmooze and kiss babies and shake hands. Uh, and then you need a programmer to come up with content. So uh, I was the nerd. And that was about all I could do. You were do the with, nerd? Are you kidding? The, the, I thought the, you were going to be the fundraiser. You're the you're the one I, running you know, wires. You couldn't even I, get your Ethernet cable ready today for our interview. <laughs> I didn't say I was a good nerd. I just said I was a nerd. <laughs> uh, but you know, by the grace of God, through uh, you know a lot of perseverance and struggle, we kept it on all those years. It's still on now. So that's been next year will be uh, uh, ten years uh, well, that since I've been in it. That's a great story, but now, but go back now. Go back. Sure, so sure. You're, so you're, back you're listening to uh, this the the Christian radio station. And I know what you mean. There was uh, every other every half hour. There's a new theology that comes on. Exactly. You know, to get your show on EWTN, you go through a discernment department. Right. Wow. <laughs> I don't know how I slipped through the crack, but you know, I mean, <laughs> it's it, you don't just get to be on EWTN. You you go through to make sure your theology and your life is right. straight. Right, uh, and so I know what you mean. Some great teaching. One of my favorite teachers, Chuck Swindoll. You know, um, some great teaching there. But even there, I had to kind of slice, parse some of it. You know, and yeah. so you have this kind of like confusion that takes place. And that's exactly what was happening with me. I I didn't, um, you know, I knew I was supposed to respect Mary uh, as the mother of God, and I knew that there, the, the, we went to the Eucharist, but um, on Sunday, but there was like a lot of this talking about how that was more symbolic and how Mary just didn't seem to play any kind of a part in that. And it, you know, I was, I wasn't going to daily mass at the time. I was, I was going to Sunday mass and I'd but you had been under catechized. There was a lot of. Yeah. Totally. In your, in your, yeah. Okay. I get yeah. it. Well, a lot like a lot of us. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, so anyway, I was searching and I just couldn't seem to find all the answers. And then by the grace of God, uh, I never left the church, but uh, I went through this real dark night of the soul, and, and everything started being taken away from me. I couldn't pray anymore. I couldn't pick—the Bible would be sitting right in front of me, and it was almost as if I was being told, don't touch this. You don't know what you're doing. You know, it's like having a loaded loaded weapon, okay? You, yes. You interpreted Praise this. God, I don't yeah. I not this anymore. Uh, yeah. So I, I just was in this blackness, and out of desperation, I started going to morning mass because I was like, well, if I can't pray, at least I'll be around other people that are praying. And if I can't read the scriptures myself, at least I'll hear them read to me. And so it was kind of like God's way of saying, look, I'm going to teach you the things that you need. It's like you this is sacred ground. Exactly. When you pick up that Bible. This is sacred ground. You need a guide. You don't, I don't want you, the, the message I was getting was, I don't want you making me in your image. I made you in my image. Let me explain these things to you and stop trying to interpret them yourself falsely. So uh, I went to uh, daily mass every morning. I've been going every morning since, and that's been 17 years now. Uh, now I've got eight kids and six LLCs, so my wife and I alternate. I'll, I'll... <laughs> you got eight kids and six LLCs. I've never heard anybody say it like that before. Yeah, it's, uh... <laughs> they're both are kind of both kind of your children yeah. too, right? They're I'm both telling you, I am a tired man. But... <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, I. Uh, uh, back to where I was, I was like wherever that was, uh, uh, I was uh, going through this dark night and out of desperation going to daily mass. And after about nine weeks, um, you know, I had a lot of personal tragedy at the same time, uh, family related stuff. And um, I was at, I was about nine weeks into it. And I was at mass and I remember sitting there in the pew and I was just weeping copiously. And I just looked up at the cross and I said, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Where are you in all this? I mean, it was the it was the worst moment of my life, you know. And I just dropped my head, and I heard the bells ring, ding a ling a ling a ling, and I looked up and I saw the priest raising up the host. And I said, "Oh dear God, <laughs> you didn't leave me. I almost left you. I was willing to walk away from my inheritance. Mm. This is mine. Oh my this is birthright." And it it just it was like scales falling from St. Paul's eyes. That's how I felt. It's like I could finally see it, and I understood the the mystery of the Eucharist uh, in a new and deeper way. And then he just kept un, unfolding and unfolding and unfolding this uh, day after day. And it's, it's been a beautiful walk and a beautiful journey. And I, I praise him for every minute of it, uh, even in the dark part. You know, uh, you and I had talked earlier about why do bad things happen to good people. Without want, there is no one. There's no opportunity for one to supply that want. 
And in a certain sense, as much as human want is, can be miserable and it can be hard and difficult and trying and, and something we, we want to flee from, without it, there's really not a lot of opportunity for charity in the world, whether it be uh, God himself giving certain invisible graces or whether him giving graces that come to us in flesh, you know, or in a can of soup or, you know, uh, whatever it might be. Lasagna. God's- you know, and it, Lasagna, it, 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 lasagna's good too. So, <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's a visible grace. <laughs> Very visible grace. And yeah. chocolate. Oh yeah. And your okay. cigars. But go ahead. So uh anyway, that's I became a holy card printer by accident. I was in the printing business all these years, uh, in the family business, just selling commercial printing. And I always thought to myself, if I could just stop selling business cards, I could really serve God somewhere. Yeah, but tell me, what year about what year was this? This was all. I started uh, printing in the family printing business in 1992, and this was all like in 2002. So, so there was, was a big transition here. in the printing. The whole printing world right. went through a huge transition during this time of crisis, too. Right. And so I was at the point now where um, I, I was, I'm not an author. I'm not a writer. I, I, I have no skill set. I'm not Actually, you school. should be, Peter. You should be. Well, you know, I, I'm a, I can pray. And that's what I, I did was during that real time of crisis, I started writing these prayers down. And I was like, you know, I'm in the printing business. Maybe I'll put some on the back of a card with a picture of Jesus on the front. Maybe put some out at the church. And I did that. And the next thing you know, I'm getting calls. Hey, can you send some more of those cards? And then more prayers started coming and then more cards started coming. And uh, right now we're the largest holy card, family owned holy card publisher in the United States. And we have over 750 titles and we ship all well, over the world. We've well, got we got cards in stock. We got to take a break, Peter. It goes time goes by, but you know I got to tell you, my dad, you know, is an ordained deacon, but he doesn't minister anymore. But what he does is he goes to uh, mass on Sundays. Well, he goes to mass every morning, but on Sunday mornings, all the children come by him in his in his wheelchair, and he hands out holy cards to them <laughs> and tells them how beautiful they are, how special they are, how, how there's no one else in the world like them, how God has a perfect plan for their lives, and gives them holy cards. So. You and I got to send him some holy cards, okay? Absolutely. I'll, talk- I'll get full supply. Yeah, we're talking with Peter Bond. I forgot that that's how you got started. Peter Bond, with who creates our beautiful Bears Man Cave cigars. And hey, Peter, we should put in a plug for them. Um, they can go to uh, women, especially go to deepadventure.com, buy your men the seven cigar sampler. You can go to our shop on deepadventure.com and you can buy the seven virtue cigars. For those who are watching on YouTube, you can see I have the sample of them right here with a proper humidity uh, manager inside them. But it's a great gift to give to your men. So you go to deepadventure.com and order them by the box, which you can see back here if you're on YouTube, or by the, the sampler size of seven. Great, great gift to give to you, the men because in there when you unpeel the wrapper of uh, the seven virtues, if you unpeel the wrapper for Caraggio or Fortitude, uh, and you have to unpeel it to really enjoy the cigar, we made the, the labels kind of big, there's a quote from one of my books on that particular virtue. So it's a great way for men to enjoy a cigar during the holidays with each other, but talk about something other than sports. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Hey, man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Uh, we believe that the most radical thing you can do in life is abandon yourself to the wildness of God's will. I, I was watching um, uh, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe the other night with my wife. You know, C.S. Lewis's story uh, of Aslan, the lion. And towards the end of the show, he says, uh, I'm a good lion. That doesn't mean I'm a tame lion. God is wild. You can't put him in a box. And when you say to God, like Peter did, let your will be done, get ready for a wild ride. And my prayer always for my wife is every day that her wildest dreams will come true because I think it's a wild ride. It appears like that's kind of what God started. Peter's been telling us now how he started to pray these prayers, writing them down, and then you begin to create holy cards. And you said 750 different 
types of yeah, cards? Yeah, we have about 750 different uh, card titles. We have about 4 million uh, cards in our warehouse. We ship them all over the world. It's just a, it's something that I never could have imagined. But God took that, that time of wow. grief and that time of heartbreak and that time of questioning and, and, and confusion, and he straightened all that out. And then and it gave me a mission. And, you know, you talk about your dad with the little kids. I remember, like I mentioned before, you know, uh, growing up uh, in, with the Greek Orthodox uh, uh, faith on my grandfather's side, <clears throat> and then the Catholic faith, and then my mom's uh, 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 Baptist heritage from her family. I remember as a kid getting these little holy cards, the, the, the beautiful, and they just, they stuck with me. They were just, you know, they were deeper than a baseball card collection. They had yeah. faith. They were tangible I, signs yeah. of our faith. The nuns and, would give it to me if I remembered my catechism teaching or something. I loved it. Yeah, yeah. and I, uh, I remember being, uh, I mentioned I had gone to high or, uh, middle school at a Catholic school, and when I was in sixth grade, <clears throat> they took us to a uh, monastery up in Conyers, Georgia, a monastery of the Holy Spirit. I met a little monk, Father Francis Xavier, and he passed away probably about uh, 12 years ago. Uh, but he and I became, I was 12 years old, and uh, he and I became pen pals, and we would send holy cards back and forth to each other in the mail. Oh He'd send a set, I'd send him. So now, you know, no childhood kidding. is not about, it's not about just getting through it to do, figure out what you're going to do. Every single thing that happens to you in your childhood, it's setting, it's seed, there's seeds planted for, for down the road. So now that I spend my fun. days putting holy cards in envelopes and mailing them all over the world. So, <laughs> you know, God, God works four, in four million way. holy cards sitting in your warehouse. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's and you a, know, the people who... Okay, well, now, now the, so the people who are watching this on YouTube, by the way, we really want to encourage people to subscribe to, go to Bear Wozniak and, on YouTube and subscribe uh, because then you get the radio show on video. And uh, if we can get uh, a, a thousand more subscribers, YouTube will blow us up a little bit, they said. So help us out by going there and subscribing. But if you're watching Peter Bond right now on YouTube, you're sitting in a humidor, it looks like to me. I see a <laughs> yeah. wall of cigars behind you. Yeah, and your your own label, the Regina Cigars, right? And so, well, how did how did that happen? Well, I well, you went um, from holy cards to, I don't want to interrupt my, the flow of your story, but yeah, yeah, I, it's it's kind of choppy. But my wife says I'm a serial entrepreneur. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> start something. I have to anything that's a hobby. I have to turn it to, into a business. I don't know what what motivates me that way, but I'm kind of wired that way. Um, I told my dad, you know, he. Uh, he's not real handy with a with a toolbox, you know. And I said, you know, I I, mean, I know a lot of guys say, well, my dad taught me how to do this, build this, and build that. I said, my dad never told me how to build anything except a business. And, yeah, mine too. <laughs> mine too. Exactly. Very, very. Re I'm good at getting estimates. Yeah. Right. Right. But right. Like, right now, the washing machine salesman, I'm uh, a washing machine repairman, they yeah. come in any minute during this interview, you know, because we have my studio <laughs> in my house. Because I couldn't fix it. YouTube doesn't fix everything, you know. That's right. I don't have any handyman skills, but I can get estimates. That's right. That's all it takes. But uh, so anyway, I, I decided I was going to buy a, a retail cigar shop. It was it was my old cigar shop back in early '90s when I first started enjoying cigars. Oh no, and, kidding! Yeah, and I heard the guy was retiring, and I had been selling cigars all that time on the side as a wholesaler uh, for almost 20 years. And so uh, it was a kind of a natural fit, and I had never been in brick and mortar before. Uh, but I bought the store and started meeting a lot of friends, and I and um, I just realized though that you know, when you're dealing with the general public like that, you're, I kind of had to come out of my little Catholic bubble because as a holy card publisher, all my customers are either priests or nuns or you know little old uh, ladies who, who run adoration chapels. I mean, everybody's nice and they're kind and they're charitable, and mm -hmm. I, I was in a whole new world now. Everybody came in and they were cranky and they were having a good day or having a bad day or they believed in God or they didn't believe in God or they hated God or they, you know, they, there was all kinds of people. And so I mm. would kind of watch the dynamic in the cigar shop and I would see that, you know, the guys would be smoking uh, their cigar and enjoying that. And then eventually they'd have to take the band off and they'd f fidget with the band and look at it. And I thought, I'm like, how can I get my faith in these people's hands, but not in a preachy way, in a very subtle way. And so I thought, you know, if I could actually make like a little band that was like a holy card with a beautiful image on you the front. You did it too, man. You did it. Yeah. There on the back. And uh, yeah. and then I said, well, how am I going to compete with all the other brands in the humidor? If you look around me, there's, I mean, we probably have 800 open boxes in here. And uh, I, I'd look around and it was an old tradition that uh, cigar companies would use pictures of beautiful women on their bands to get the attention of the guys. And I said, well, if I'm going to have to compete with these other brands, I'm going to have to use a picture of the most beautiful woman that ever lived. And I said, Praise well, that, God. that brought us to Our Lady. 
Oh, and, praise uh, God. Yeah. And a lot, someone asked me, said, aren't you, isn't that sacrilegious? Aren't you just using, you know, your faith to sell cigars? I said, no, 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 no. You misunderstand it. I'm using cigars to sell our faith. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm hey, putting it in their hands. Hey, describe what you and I did with my, my cigars, the Bears Man Cave cigars. Describe them for everybody how, and the labels and all that. This is oh, a good yeah. example of what you're saying. Well, what we do, I took the printing background and then I have the, you know, this massive uh, library of Catholic holy card uh, Im- images. And so we can take any type of uh, image. What we did with yours, in particular, you know, you had supplied us the quotes and we have the logo and then you get the images. And we can theme each one and do custom banded cigars like that. Um, but you, really, have, you, have the, you have the images of the seven, the women. Right. Who represent each of those virtues, the classic women. Is that Renaissance right. or what are those paintings? What era is those I paintings? so, yes. Uh-huh. And so you have the image for courage, and there's a woman that, who represents that virtue. Exactly. So the label is the label is. Uh, let's see, the label is really cool. Yeah, go ahead and describe then. Sure. What, sure. How we how we chose the the different blends. I'm gonna hold up the card for people who are seeing you know on YouTube. Each yeah, of those it's women a, is uh, represents one of the seven virtues. It's just so cool. It's a great way of evangelizing because you know the thing about uh, cigars is. It's not a habit. It's a hobby. Uh, guys get together and they enjoy different blends. They try different ones and they, they find nuances. And then uh, when they're when they're having the cigar and they're talking, they're having conversations. Um, you know what you did there with putting the virtues uh, on the bands. It gives a, a pause in the conversation when they have to take it off and they look at it and they're like, "Huh, this is kind of neat." And then it becomes a talking point. It, and and so you know it, what? It really <laughs> does, doesn't it? It does, and it becomes an opening for a conversation that never would have been able to, you know, be had otherwise. So when a, when a woman, uh, if a woman who loves her husband or her brother or her son goes to our website deepadventure dot com and they can send them the seven g- cigar sampler, it really is striking the, the the beauty of the labels. But then when you unpeel that, and it's really easy to unpeel, so you don't tear it. And then there's this quote from my book on one of the virtues. It really gives them pause to consider. And cigar is always about a great pause, right? I mean, it's a one-hour It's a commitment. Yeah, it's it, a, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, I, uh, in the cigar shop, um, I have a kind of a – we opened a second store about a year ago. We opened on the Feast of Our Ladies, Immaculate Conception, December 8th. Congratulations. And, uh, so we're celebrating one year for that and 25 years overall for the business. Uh, but – what I say, my, my, you know, somebody asked me my, my philosophy about, you know, well, how do you sell more cigars? And do, I said, the cigars are not the end. The cigars are the means. The ends mm-hmm. are the conversations and the friendships and uh, the authentic masculinity that can take place in a safe place in a cigar lounge. I mean, it, 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 as a gentleman's place, not as just a, you know, place. one of the first things I did when I bought that retail store uh, the gentleman that owned it before I did had he was a little salty in his character as ex cop and and the language is a little tough and you know I said you know I spent the last fifteen or twenty years trying not to hear words like this and I I don't want to go back to that so I put up a little sign in both stores uh, multiple signs in the bigger store uh, it says speak like the gentleman you are profanity is beneath your dignity and praise just, God Peter Bond you rock it's, man it's a silent little reminder if you can read and you're sitting in there you know the ethos of the store. This isn't a place to come in here and tell all your, your bad stories. This is a place to come in here and enjoy good, authentic friendships and, and manly conversations about things that matter. And, and i got to tell you, you know, um, Peter, when you do have a cigar, uh, it, is, uh, it is taking a time out. It so is. It's about an hour. Yeah. And G.K. Chesterton, man, he, he, right, he, he's going to become the patron saint of cigars, I think. But my prayer life i got to tell you my morning prayer of course i have it's about a half hour to an hour maybe sometimes longer but in the evening when i'm studying that cigar carries me into it and through oh, yeah. uh, my prayer time and then my reading and my writing of books or whatever um it, there's just something beautiful about it maybe it's the breathing in i don't know what it is there's something tactile like a rosary there's the right. breathing in and out like saying the jesus prayer it's something beautiful about a cigar it's very manly about a cigar I oh, think yeah. that's the other thing. It's very manly. Women do enjoy them from time to time, but it's kind of a, a man thing. Um, yeah. Uh, we'll be right back with more with my with Peter Bond. He is the owner of Regina Cigars, and he provides the beautiful seven sampler cigars that we have on our website. The seven virtue cigars that we created uh, for our uh, 
for our, our, our supporters at deepadventure.com. Peter, we'll be right back with you after this break. Good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We're with Peter Bond, who I really uh, dig him. He's a, he's, a, he's a man's man. He's, he's bold. He's uh, entrepreneurial. He's created uh, with his wife eight babies and seven LLCs, I think you said. Uh, he helped uh, uh, carry on uh, a, a Catholic radio station that was having financial difficulties and took care of it, did, doing all kinds of things outside the box. But what's inside the box that I love is his cigars. And uh, we have uh, our Seven Virtue Cigars uh, available at deepadventure.com. They can buy the sampler set or they can buy a whole box of one of the individual blends. But uh, Peter, uh, we had uh, uh, a men's group that wanted to, uh, cigars sent to them about a month ago. And by the way, at the Napa Institute, we provide your cigars to everybody that comes. We, I think we gave away 500, 600 cigars in Sacramento last year. But there was a, man, a, a men's group that was putting on a men's conference, and they wanted to use our, our, our cigars. And you had a real challenge getting them to them because of the hurricane. Right. Can you tell us what – talk story with us about your experience of that hurricane and what lessons we can take from the, that. This, yeah. This, uh, what was the uh, name of the hurricane again that went Hur through? Hurricane Michael. Okay. And uh, they came in and just slapped this side of uh, Florida uh, as hard as we've ever seen. I think they said it was like a mile or two, uh, an hour shy of being a Category 5. And uh, it, it was a direct hit in Mexico Beach, Panama City, uh, which is a little west of us. Uh, we were out of power for about four days on average. Some places around here over almost two weeks were out of power. Uh, some of the smaller towns really got hurt. Um, but I tell you, one of the things that, my brother-in-law is a priest up in Panama City at St. Dominic's, and um, you know they started out over there. Someone brought some supplies, and their church got uh, really damaged. Their parish hall was completely gone. Uh, oh, that's that parish. I heard about that. Yeah, that's my brother-in-law's a pastor there. No and, way. Yeah, and so they they have basically you talking about God working in mysterious ways. Um, you know, my brother-in-law had never been trained in emergency response management or anything like that, or never been a member of the Red Cross emergency team, but there he was, and someone brought some supplies, and then someone else came up and needed some supplies, so he gave them to them, and then somebody else brought more supplies, and more people showed up. Now they had, at one point, I think around 5,000 people a day coming through that parking lot of that church, but what a means of evangelization, and it, like I said earlier, as hard as it is with uh, human suffering and want and tragedy and why do you know, good things or uh, bad things happen to good people. There is a place for God to work there. And sometimes that's the only thing that gets us to pay attention is when we are in need, uh, when everything's comfortable, when we have 24 hour Walmart and we have next day delivery by uh, Amazon and FedEx and all, we don't have any patience for anything. But when your power's out and you have nothing to do and that boredom sets in and the frustration that comes with it and, and you reach out to God a little bit more and you're asking for help. And, uh, that's the, the, that's the kindergarten of prayer is, uh, having need and asking God for help. Uh, and then it, you know, it goes on to in deeper levels, but our, our country seems to be in certain senses, uh, our, our, our culture, at least, uh, so far from God that, you know, these things are, are opportunities for wake up to, to get closer to him. You know, there's no, he's always trying to be close to us, but we're always trying to, you know, avoid him. Uh, whether it's the technology that keeps us separated or, or you know, our, our, the businesses of our schedules, whatever it might be. But, um, you know, one thing I do want to, put, to give a shout out to the Knights of Columbus. I, I am a knight praise, myself. Praise God for the Knights. They did amazing work and uh, just coordination of supply efforts. And um, I said this about our side of uh, Florida. You know, everybody thinks you talk about Florida being so cold. You were in the 60s this morning. We were in the 30s. OK, we're south of Georgia up here. And uh, <laughs> OK. I told people, I said, you know, we're Bubba's, but we get it done. 
and uh, we would you'd hear the hum of the generators and the chainsaws. So what? And, what do the Knights of Columbus do? Is that at the local level or at the national level? They send in. Hits? Well, it's the national and the local. I mean, our local parish uh, Knights Council uh, coordinated uh, uh, water distribution and food and, and clothing, everything else. And we would we pitched in everything and uh, uh, help load trucks, and they would take them down to the affected areas. Uh, and bring them back uh, all the supplies they needed. It was it was a very coordinated, very disciplined, and very uh, generous effort by the Knights of Columbus. And uh, very very proud to be a knight, uh, just to be part of that organization. They just they do so much good for so many people, quietly and without thanks, without any kind of fanfare. They're just there. They're a solid rock. I was just speaking with the communications director for Knights of Columbus uh, yesterday, uh, and I. I uh, became a member only a year ago, but so proud to be a member, and we're so proud of the Knights of Columbus. And yeah. I think there's, I think that, in a way, they're they're the point of the spear. There's there's the, with the with the challenges in the church today, the scandal and all of that. We need manly virtue again. Amen. And in the Knights of Columbus, you've got this great uh, resource of older men. Right. I mean, some of them are much older. Yeah. And they can teach. Even though I'm a senior citizen, they can teach me a lot. But we need to get our younger men uh, involved so that this, kind of like your dad didn't teach you how to, wasn't a repairman, <laughs> didn't teach you how to do things with tools, but he taught you business. Right. We need these men to mentor us about life. And right. we need to use that, that uh, knowledge and wisdom and virtue, exp- expose ourselves to that while we can because we're getting older. And we need to renew the Knights of Columbus uh, uh, all the way to the youngest of, of, our, of our men. I agree. I agree. Yeah, there's a. They are the, like you said, the, the tip of the spear. It's 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 practical Christianity. It's where the rubber meets the road. When there's someone in need, when there's some good that needs to be done, and nobody else is willing to do it, the knights are there. And I, I had my three boys with me, and they were loading uh, loading water bottles and cases of soup or whatever on the truck. And you know, when we first uh, were there in the parish hall, we saw this huge you know um, display of, of supplies that needed to go out. And I said, come on, boys, let's go help. Like, oh, do we have to do that? Do we have to do that? You know, t- uh, 8, 10, and 12 years old, giving this typical resistance. I said, this is bigger than you are. You need you need, you need to help. There's people that don't have anything. We didn't get it as bad as they did. And so they pitched in, and boy, by the, by the end of it, they were so happy to have been, you know, been part of it. But uh, to have somebody to coordinate that and to have the initiative and say, we're going to do it. And like you said, some of the older gentlemen, I'm in my 40s. Uh, one of the gentlemen that was, that was uh, spearheading it, he was in his 70s, and he was up there lifting bottles of water like nobody's been. I mean, he was just cranking them out, and I was mm. just very impressed. I mean, he just you could tell he, he felt it from the bottom of his heart. He had the sense of urgency to, to help other people. We're proud of our Knights of Columbus, and men <clears throat> need to be with other men. Uh, there are men's movements uh, now, uh, men's conferences, uh, cell groups of men, you know, that gather to study Scripture and to bond with one another. I have my Bears Man Cave where men can come and they, uh, you know, they join, they go to my website, join Bears, Bears Man Cave, it's $10 a month, and then they get access to my secret Facebook group. And we post things there, we challenge, we equip, we mobilize. We have every two or three weeks a Zoom video meetup where we all can talk and look at each other, and, and we go through my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. But the, what that lacks is action, is the, is the boots on the ground type thing of Knights of Columbus. Knights, right. the, the way you forge brotherhood is by doing, having a common cause and doing something together, uh, talking and praying and all that is, has its place. But we need men of action, too. We need faith in action. That, when we rode our motorcycles across the United States, we became a band of brothers. We helped each other. We helped others. We witnessed. We were men in action. And so I think in that way, younger men need to become part of Knights of Columbus and become part of that the brotherhood of men and faith in action. I totally agree. Totally agree. The, the infrastructure is already there. The organization is already there. Uh, it's, it's, it's has the, the roots and the history. We just need to bring new blood in. And I, I encourage you anything you can do uh, through your media uh, out, outreaches to, to help people learn more about the Knights to join up with the Knights. Uh, it's, it's a great organization. I, I resisted it for years. Me too. Not- I thought it was something that the guys, you know, I, was, I thought it was like the Boy Scouts, and I, I was a Boy Scout dropout after about two weeks. I was like, I'm not wearing that tie, you know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, I, I don't want to wear that funny hat. But they got rid of them, I heard. Right. I heard they have berets now. That yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah, and, and I was like, they're just the guys that run bingo. 
And then exactly. I, because like you said, they do so much, but it's behind the scenes and it's quiet. Exactly. And then when you get involved, you go, oh my gosh, they're doing so much. Yeah, and the good but, news though also is for men like you and I who are entrepreneurial and we're busy, um, they say, look, uh, you don't have to give your life and soul to the Knights of Columbus. They said, basically, we want, you know, five to 10 hours a year from you. That's your minimum requirement. But once you were willing to give that, then you find a natural avenue to give within Knights of Columbus. But you don't have to be afraid that you're going to suddenly get overwhelmed with, uh, you know, needing to, to serve. We're talking with Peter Bond of Regina Cigars. And how can they find you, Peter? Uh, you can find out about our, our uh, holy cards at catholicprayercards.org. And uh, uh, the cigars are at reginacigars.com. But the best cigars that you have of all, they can get at deepadventure.com. Our, our seven sampler, the seven virtue cigars. Peter, thank you for being with us. We want to invite everybody to go to our website, deepadventure.com. We have a, we're, we're letting you know this now because it's the holidays. Uh, we have my books are on sale. We have our long ride home coffee cups. Women, you can buy the cigars for your, for your spouse or you can buy them a membership in Bear's Man Cave um, uh, for your brothers, your, your, your sons. But we really love the women because they kind of get, get, give the men the nudge to get going. Uh, until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Plus, good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell.